What is good, everybody? It's your boy Uncle Sam's Reject here, and I'm officially back from vacation. As you can see, I'm finally back at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Can't wait to start putting out content for you guys. We're in the dead season with 2K, so you know it's hard to come up with um, you know, ideas for videos. But I got about six, you know, or so. So hopefully, I can get some videos out today. If not, definitely tomorrow. But before that, man, I gotta tell you guys about my vacation from hell, dog. I'm telling you, man. This vacation stressed me out a lot. You know what I'm saying? You know, I showed y'all the vlogs. It seemed like everything was good and all that. But, man, let me tell you, this shit was so stressful. All right, man. So, first, I already knew this vacation was going to kind of be a little trash. You know what I'm saying? From the beginning. You know, if anybody is familiar with the military, you know what I mean? I'm retired. My wife is still in, though. So, she had to put in the leave form. You know what I mean? Just like any other job, you have to get approved to go on vacation. So, you know, her bosses, you know what I mean, her NCOIC, you know, for people that's in the military to understand that, they were trying to say that she didn't deserve her leave, she couldn't take as many leave days as she wanted, blah, 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 you know what I mean? So we finally got that squared away. We didn't get as many leave days as we wanted, but everything worked out perfect. Now, the day my wife's leave start, we head over to the airport, and as uh, a thing in the Army or the military in general, you can catch the... These flights that are called hops, you know what I mean? Planes go back and forth from different bases, you know what I mean, every day. And um, you can get on a flight for free just for being in the military or being a military spouse or retiree or anything like that. So, you know what I mean? First day, it's a flight going to New Jersey. Where were we going first? Where I'm from. We get in line, you know what I mean? We go through security, get our bags in there and everything like that. We get on the bus on the flight line to go to the plane. Everything's good. We're sitting in the AC. We're chilling. Then finally, they say, everybody get off the bus. Dog. We, nobody knew what was going on. So we get off the bus, and they say, you know what I mean, that the aircraft couldn't take us. So, you know, everybody's a little sad and, and all that. So they tell us, then we wait here at the counter. We're going to see if we can talk to them into taking you guys. So after about another two-hour wait, you know what I'm saying, they finally say, yeah, the aircraft said they could take you. But they left already. So let me give you, you know what I mean, let me backtrack a little bit and tell you what I did. The night prior to the flight, you know what I mean, we had to be, at, we had to be, you know what I mean, at the airfield, at the PAX terminal at, let's see, 06 in the morning, 05 in the morning, something like that. So me, I'm like, all right, I'm going to stay up all night so I can get on the plane and sleep, and that way I'll already be acclimated, you know what I mean, back to the six-hour time difference back in America. And wrong. They sent this back. So we come home, me, my wife, and our daughters, everybody passes out. We're extremely tired. Everybody's so tired, we all fell asleep in different rooms. I mean, so we get up the next day. We go back to the terminal. We're low on the list again, but you know what I mean? We need a lot of things to go in our favor, and they finally do. So we get in um, line once again, waiting to go through security, pay for our flight, everything like that. And then the dude comes up to us and says, well, you guys, you know, I'm sorry. We overbooked the flight. So the last seven people we booked, we had to take off. So, you know what I mean? There's two families, mine and another. And then there was a, a single guy, you know what I mean, who all had to get their refund back and everything like that. So th luckily this time for us, we kept our car at the terminal just in case. So we were able to drive back home, which is literally like a five-minute drive because we live on post. And we come back. And, you know, it's sad. We had to kind of go shopping. So we bought, like, you know what I mean, oodles and noodles, hot dogs and stuff like that. Didn't want to do nothing too crazy, just to have something to sustain ourselves. And then we finally, on the last day, you know what I'm saying, we go, we have to drive an hour and a half away to a whole nother terminal because they have a higher chance of getting flights. You know what I mean? So there's two flights. There's one to Maine, which is eight hours away from New Jersey. Uh, not too, too bad of a drive. But then there's one to South Carolina, which is a 14-hour drive. Now, we were going to get on the main flight, but just so happens that plane ends up having mechanical issues. Now, anybody that knows anything about the military, all of our shit always has mechanical issues and, and everything always goes wrong. So, you know, at that point, we're just saying we just want to get to America. Get us to America. So we go. We fly to South Carolina. You know what I mean? We get there. Everything's kind of good. But then we get a flight. That can take us from South Carolina to Maryland, which is only a three-hour drive, you know what I'm saying, to New Jersey. 
So we look up a, a rental car to be able to put all six of our of our pieces of luggage in there and everything like that. Plus the, the baby stroller and the car seat. You know what I mean? So we get we get the car. They these motherfuckers want like three hundred and twenty six dollars a day, just because of the city there and they're in Baltimore, main city. So that's crazy. And I said, you know what? I'm not paying that much for a rental. And literally, we would have got we would have got to New Jersey the same exact time as uh, driving from South Carolina as we did flying to Maryland. So we finally, you know what I mean? Get catch the cab over to the uh, airport. We get a good deal on the car rental. We start to drive home. I get a little tired, you know, I'm jet lagged or whatever like that. So we stop at a hotel after, you know, we got Wendy's. We haven't had Wendy's in like a year and a half or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So we, we get some Wendy's. Everybody's excited. We go to our hotel to crash for the night. We get in the hotel. This thing is like still under still under construction. You know what I mean? My wife took a, a toilet piece of toilet paper, wiped the toilet seat. Black shit came off on it. You know what I mean? Our our bed had old, had old hair in it, green spots on the covers. So we had to pack our shit up from there, go back to the front desk, say, "Look, my man, we need our money back." And the funny thing about that, there was a dude in front of us demanding his money back as well. So the dude gave us our money back, no problem. So we had to end up going to you know a Holiday Inn, and we had to end up spending like a hundred and eighty dollars for that night, just for a couple hours to get some sleep for our comfort to stay somewhere sanitary and whatnot. So we get up, you know, what I mean, we go to Waffle House. And then we hit the road. You know what I mean? Things are looking good. We we drive through North Carolina. We got a few friends in North Carolina. We stopped by, seen them. Haven't seen them in a while. All of our kids finally met each other. Um, you know, all of our babies finally met each other because our older kids knew each other and, and whatnot. And it's a good time. We head over to New Jersey. Everything's still sweet. You know what I mean? Everything's going good. We go to the beach, see my dad, see my sister. You know what I mean? We go to the Phillies game. Everything is like peachy. Everything is 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 amazing. But then when we pack up the leave from New Jersey to go to Philly to fly to Nashville, we notice our iPod is missing. Our iPad is missing. Seven hundred dollar iPad, not even a year old. Ask my wife, did you take it outside? No, I knew she didn't take it outside. I knew I didn't take it outside. Ask my thirteen year old, did she bring it in the car? She thinks maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe she's seen it in the car or whatnot. So, long story short, that shit more than likely, you know what I mean, got stolen at the beach. Maybe, they, like, somehow they either we dropped it out the car or the car door didn't get locked. A lot of moving parts, whatever. So, you know what I mean, we head, we head to Philly. We're running late. I know it's a lot. Head to Philly. We're running late. Get to the airport. We have 15 minutes left to get on our flight. They were going to put us on the flight, but when they see how much luggage we had, they said, oh, no. We got to reschedule you, blah, blah, blah. So we had to end up waiting a whole nother four or five hours to get on the plane. And then once we got on that plane, we got to uh, D.C. And then we had to wait like a whole nother four or five hours in D.C. just to be able to fly to Nashville, you know, to Tennessee to see our friends. So we get to Tennessee. We get another great deal on a minivan for a day, you know what I mean, um, to, to get all our stuff to our friend's house. But as we're going, you know what I mean, to the uh, to the car rental, we notice our stroller is all messed up. It's dirty. It's got rips in it. But the, the wheel is stuck. You literally cannot push this stroller. Airline broke our stroller. What the fuck? It's a whole nother thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, you know, things are looking bad. We end up having to literally throw the stroller away. We go to United. We ask them, you know, you broke the guys broke our stroller. How can we get, you know, the money back? They tell us we have to buy a whole nother brand new stroller. This is like a three hundred and seventy dollar stroller, two hundred seventy dollars, however however the fuck much it costs. A lot of money. It's a jogging stroller. We have to buy a whole new one, and then we have to submit our claim and wait three to four months for us to get a refund check. And at this point, it's not even worth it. So already we missing flights. We uh we missing time on a vacation. Uh, we lost the iPad at seven hundred dollars. The stroller was broke. We're already at a thousand dollar loss right there. So we're in Tennessee. Everything's good once again. Hang out with friends. Take the kids to a trampoline park, as you've seen in the vlog. You know, what I mean, everything like that. We we go shopping. Everything you want to do on a vacation. So you know, what I'm saying we go. Finally, we leave Tennessee and we head down to Georgia to see my wife's family. Now, you know, everything's good there. We go to Georgia, stay there for a day. Then we go to Mississippi because my mother-in-law got us a free hotel room 
You know what I mean? For a few days down in Mississippi. You know, we gamble a little bit. We lose a little bit of money there. It happens. You, you're definitely going to lose money. But the day the day we get there, our daughter, my nine-month-old, she's screaming her lights out. She won't go to sleep. She's uncomfortable. She's tired as hell. But she, you know what I mean? She Anybody with a baby knows how babies can get. So the next morning, we take her to the hospital. She has an ear infection. Huh. So right now we got this big, we got this nine month old baby who in the last 24 hours maybe slept all of two to three hours. Cranky as hell, screaming at the top of her lungs, not letting me or her mom sleep. You know what I mean? Because we got to tend to her and everything like that. We finally, we have to go to a Walgreens, but we have to wait for the Walgreens to open. We get to the Walgreens, everything's smooth there. We get the antibiotics, we get her some Motrin, we get her some Tylenol, we get her, you know what I mean? We get her some Benadryl to help her sleep. Everything's good there. We go on the beach. We chill. And like I said, we play We play the slots, play some blackjack, all that stuff. You know, we game a little bit, have some fun. Go back to Georgia for my sister-in-law's baby shower. See more family there. Good times, good vibes. Everything is going well. So now it's almost time for us to leave to come back to Germany. We're just on the porch the day before, and I'm talking to my wife. I, you know, I do a little mental checklist and everything like that. I just go, uh, hey, babe, where's our passports? She looks, oh, shit, where are the passports? So I go to our luggage, and I check to see if our passports are on our luggage. You know, we call our friend back in Tennessee, six hours away, and say, hey, are our passports there? She says, yes. So now our last day in America, you know what I mean, <laughs> we have to drive six hours to Tennessee it's six hours back, a straight 12 hour trip back to back in one shot just to get our passport so we could be able to leave the country. Once again, we had to take our nine month old with her. She hasn't been having a good trip, first time in America. She gets sick, she's not happy. Me and her mom are in the front seat driving, everything like that. We got my mother in law, grandma in the back seat. She wasn't feeling her. We finally get there, you know what I mean? Pick up our passports, go in the mall right quick, had to exchange some shirts. Got some food. We start heading back to Georgia. On our way back to Georgia, our daughter was okay for a little bit, but then she started being uncomfortable again because she's a nine-month-old making a 12-hour trip. You know what I mean? She's she's never spent so much time in a car as she did on this trip. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Then on our way back to Georgia, we hit a, a great amount of traffic. So after we hit the traffic, we're just like, you know what? Fuck this shit. <laughs> like, I'm just ready to go home. So the next morning... Everything's going good. We get our gas and everything. We fill up, clean up, pack up, say our goodbyes, kisses and hugs. Go to the Atlanta airport so we could fly um, to Boston. Then from Boston to Germany, blah, blah, blah. So we're sitting in the terminal. And then what happens? Our flight to Boston gets delayed. Our flight from Boston gets delayed. So guess what happens? We're about to miss our connected flight back to Europe. <laughs> You know, we're supposed to go to Iceland and we're supposed to go to Europe. So my wife's on the phone calling, 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 calling. You know what I mean? Trying to get trying to get stuff situated. You know what I mean? We finally get a flight in Boston that actually brings us directly to Frankfurt, which is the airport here in Germany. Cool. You know what I'm saying? That's something that we need a little bit better. <laughs> so we get there, but as soon as we get off the plane, we literally kind of have to, like, speed, like, like power walk our way across the terminal. Now we landed it. We landed at Gate C, and where we were leaving from was Gate E. So we literally went from one side, you know what I'm saying, of the airport, all the way to the other side. But then you know things started started to shape up just a little bit, man. We get on the plane, you know what I mean, to Germany finally, and um, nobody's sitting next to us, you know what I mean. But um, our daughter's a little uncomfortable. She wants to lay down. A long trip and everything like that. You know what I mean? Then the flight attendant comes up to us and says, hey, we have a seat up here with the bassinet, with the bassinet um, mount and everything like that, you know, so the baby could be more comfortable. So it's us sitting next to another to another woman with her baby. You know, our daughter, you know what I'm saying? She's sleeping like a baby, everything like that. But then, boom, danger strikes once again. We have our drinks on our table. Me and my wife are talking. I move my arm a certain way. I knock a full cup of ginger ale in my lap. So now here I am with basketball shorts on, completely soaked with ginger ale. I get up, try to dry it off. I'm literally sitting on paper towels, <laughs> trying to stay dry. I'm sticky. 
I'm just I'm just wet. And one thing about me, anybody that knows me knows I hate being wet in clothes. Like whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then we find, you know, we get over that. And then finally we get our food. I got on a white t-shirt now. It's pasta. I'm trying to eat my pasta. The plane gets a little bumpy. Pasta falls off my fork, all onto my shirt. What the fuck, dog? <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, you can't make this shit up. You know what I mean? So we finally, we're finally in Germany. Like, whew, we're home. You know what I mean? Let's go to, let's go to baggage claim, get our stuff, and then we'll go on about our business. We get the baggage claim, and what's ha- what happens? Our luggage gets left in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> They made the call to try to get it. It didn't make the flight for whatever reason. So now they're they're trying to make accommodations to bring us the luggage to, you know what I mean, to where we live at. But here we go telling them, we can't go home without a car seat. We got a nine-month-old. There's no way we can legally put a nine-month-old, you know, legally or safely put her in the car, you know, to drive the, the last hour and a half home so we could finally get in our bed and everything like that. So we had to walk from one side of that airport Go all the way upstairs, get on the sky train, go all to the other way, to, all the way to the other side of the airport once again to go to the the other kiosk or whatever you want you want to call it to get a car seat. So we finally get that car seat. Then you know we're walking over to meet up with our shuttle, with our shuttle driver. Somebody leaves an unattended bag, so they shut down this whole big perimeter. You know what I mean of the of the terminal of the lobby. Nobody can go anywhere. You have to go outside. So now we're like, what the fuck? What are we going to do? How are we going to get to our shuttle? You know what I mean? We're talking to one of the, uh, the policemen there, trying to figure out how we can find some. I just happened to look. We see our shuttle driver literally driving towards the exit of the uh, of the airport, you know what I'm saying? But luckily, there was a little traffic with other shuttles, shuttles. So he stopped. I run over to him, tell him our name. We get in the car, put our bags in there. We finally get home, man. Oh, what was that? We finally get home. What's that? Tuesday. We, we were home, we take showers, we relax, we eat some food, you know what I mean? And then our bags finally arrived yesterday, Wednesday, so we have all our luggage, all our stuff made it, nothing else was broken or damaged, you know what I mean? Everything worked itself out, and I'm just happy to be back, man, so I wanted to share that with you guys. This is my, my story time, my vacation from hell. I don't think I'm going back to America again while I'm here in Germany. I'm going to just stay my ass put. And hold it down here, man. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed that little story time in that video, man. Stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy Uncle Sam's Reject, RKGames.com. I'm out this bitch. Peace.